Converting JavaScript objects to TypeScript is what we're going to be doing today on this Blue Collar Coder. I'm Jack Harrington. So glad that you're enjoying this series of converting JavaScript files to TypeScript. I think it's an interesting and novel approach and a cool new way to learn TypeScript. So we use objects a ton in JavaScript. And understanding how to type those and then seeing if the tooling can help us as we perhaps change or add fields to different objects can be really valuable. So let's check out how we do that in TypeScript right now. Okay, so here we have two files, test.js and object.js. Let's take a look at our test. So we're bringing in some functions, maybe some constants up here. Then we're defining a new object called Jack. All right, so down here we've got some test code. It's going to use this introduce person to introduce Jack, as well as ask if Jack is a full-time employee. I guess I am because my status is full-time. We can convert a person to a string. And then this one gets the professions of an object where the key, I guess, is like the ID, and then the person is the value. Probably returns engineer, I guess. Okay, let's take a look over at the code. So up at the top here, we've got some constants for full time and temporary. We've got the introduce person function, which takes a person and I see returns a formatted string. Very nice. Is full time employee does a Boolean check against the full time status. Person to string just does a JSON stringify. And then get professions takes a map of person, so that'd be the ID to the person, and then goes and gets the profession for each value. That makes sense. Okay, let's run it from node. And there you go, let's take a look over and test. So introduce person is doing Jack undefined Harrington, that's because middle is not there. Is full-time employees returning true? That JSON stringify in person to string is doing a nice job of that. And then finally, that get professions is returning engineer. Great. Good, good, good. So let's add TypeScript and TS node to this project. Both in development mode. And I'm going to go create a new script to start it up. And that's going to run TS node. In this project, in the basic types video, I actually had TS node globally installed. So that's why it worked. This one, we're going to run out of the project. So let's start it up. And looks great. So TS node runs that just fine. Now let's go change test.js to test.ts. First things first, we got to change out the require to an import. Let's run it again. And it's telling us we don't have the right file name, so let's change that. Okay, give it another go. And it looks good, so that looks fine. Now the real fun is over in objects.js, so let's convert that to objects.ts so we can start our TypeScript conversion of that. So first we need to change out how we're exporting stuff. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's yarn start it up. And ah, it's got a problem. All right, so what this is telling us is that object.values doesn't exist, but we know it does. It's just that TypeScript doesn't understand it. So we need to go and add types to this project for node. So we need to add types node to the project in development mode. And now we can run it. And so this happens when TypeScript doesn't understand the types of some of these built-ins. And so adding type slash node adds that. In a React world, sometimes you need to add at types slash React and at types slash React DOM to get the types for React stuff. Now, most libraries coming out currently have TypeScript types baked into them, so you don't need to do this. But if you find a library where TypeScript isn't acknowledging the types, then you can often look for at types and then slash and then the name of that library. Okay, so I think the first thing to do here is to define what a person is as a type. Okay, so let's go back to test.ts and we'll take a look at introduce person. And what that's telling us is that 
introduce person is now accepting a type of any as person, meaning could be anything, null, undefined, an object, an array, whatever. So we need to be more precise about that. So I'm going to go and copy the current object here, Jack, and I'm going to paste that into objects.ts. So the first thing I'm going to do is open curly brace and then paste in this person object, and then we'll just start replacing out the types. So Jack is a string. Last is a string. Well, profession is a string. We know that much. We also need a middle. So let's add that. Now, what do we do with full time and temporary? So let's try first just putting in those values and seeing if that works. And it doesn't. So let's go over here in the problems and see why. And it's telling us that we're using a value instead of a type and that we could use the type of that value. But in this case, both of those are strings. So it's going to be string or a string, which is not very good. So instead, what we're going to do is export an enum, an enumeration. We'll call it status. And it'll have two values, full time and temporary. And now for any status, it can only have those one of those two values, full time or temporary. And we'll get rid of those constants. And then we'll change status to uppercase status as the type. And we got to fix these references. So status dot full time. And that's looking good. So let's go over into test. And now we need to replace full time with status and then add status dot full time to that value. Okay, now one last problem before we start it up. So what this is telling us is that the object coming in, Jack, doesn't match the pattern required by introduced person. And that's because middle is missing. But we want middle to be an optional parameter. So how do we specify that? Let's go back over into objects.ts. And now we can add a question mark after middle. And that just says that this is an optional field. It's that easy. Now everything's running. So let's give it a go and try it out. And it looks good. We're still getting that undefined. We'll fix that in a bit. So now we could just copy and paste this anytime we need a person. But that seems like a lot, <laughs> like a lot of overkill. So what we can do instead is create a new type. And we'll call this person. So we'll start type person. And we'll equate that to that structure. And now we can just use person wherever we want a person. Now with introduce person here, I could add on the string. And that's what I did in the basic types video. Every single function was fully specified. But you don't really need to do that. So let's go over to test.js and try this again. So if I bring up introduce person, we can now see that introduce person takes a person, and that's great, and it returns a string. And that's because TypeScript has inferred that the expression in introduce person is always going to be a string. So let's go have a look at that. It's always going to be a text template, and therefore, it's always going to be a string. So you don't need to specify the return type if it's clear from the code what that return type is going to be. And TypeScript is super smart about that. Okay, let's press on here. So I think is full time employee is fine because again, it also returns a Boolean. So that's fine. So let's take a look over at person to string. Now we've got person and it's got this default value, which is super fine in JavaScript. So how do we add a type to that? Well, we just go and add colon and then person. Just like that. So you can still have default values in TypeScript. Okay, now let's talk about get professions. So that takes an ID and a person. Hmm. Okay. So how are we going to define that? Well, let's open up that an object again, because that's a map is going to be an object. And now we can type the key. So I'm going to put in here brackets, key. And you can name that whatever you want. I'm just going to use key. And then give it a type, number. And then the value is going to be a person. And that's it. And if you want to make that a little bit cleaner, we can just go and create a type for that. 
Call this one person map. And there you go. That's super clean. So let's start up again, and it looks good. All right, now let's do our coverage check. So we'll add type coverage. And then go over into our scripts. Make a script for it. Call it type coverage. And then we'll run that. And we're at 100% right away. And that means that we have not specified any, the type of any, anywhere in the system. So that's great. Let's try one more thing. Let's go back over to test.ts and see if we can get introduce person to work. So currently it's telling us that it's got zero arguments, but we need one. Okay. So the way that we do that is we go over back into introduce person and then we put a question mark after person, meaning that this is an optional argument. And that's great. But now if we run it, it's going to blow up because person is undefined. So we need a way to fix that. So what I'm going to do is use optional chaining. Now this is built into TypeScript, but it's also an optional feature in ECMAScript or JavaScript. So you'll see this in both. And what you do is you put in question mark after person, question mark after person dot name. And what this is saying is, if there's a person, then go get the name. And if there's a person dot name, then go get person dot name dot first. And if you've written any JavaScript at all with deeply nested structures, you are going to see this time and time and time again. How many times have you written if person and person dot name and person dot name dot first, then do this, right? You don't have to do that anymore in TypeScript. That's really great. So let's go do the same thing for all of these. And so what that's created is safe code. So let's start it again. And now we can see that we get undefined, 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 which is still not great. So we can use another operand, which is in TypeScript, which is question mark, question mark, and then give it a value. So in this case, we'll say first. Now what's happening in this case is that question mark, question mark says, if the value that's on the left-hand side of the expression, which is person.name.first, is either undefined or null, then use the right-hand side of the expression. So in this case, first. So you're like, oh, wait, hold on. That's like or, like the double pipe. Well, no, actually, double pipe is actually far more aggressive than that. Double pipe includes zero and an empty string and false-ish and all kinds of stuff. Whereas question mark, question mark is only undefined and null. Let's do the same thing for middle. In this case, we'll just put in an empty string and then last. We'll put it in for last. Let's try it again. And that looks good. We get first and then double space and last. Jack, double space, Harrington. That's fine. So what have we learned? We have learned about enums, enumerations, which are really cool for having a fixed set of values. We've learned how to define a type as well as how to type an object. We have learned how to do optional fields in a type, which is great. We've learned how to do optional arguments to a function. We've learned how to use the super cool optional chaining feature. We've learned about question mark, question mark, and the semantics of that. And we've learned how to type an object which is being used as a map. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned a lot about typing objects as well as optional chaining, which is a great new feature that allows you to create much more robust code without actually making the code appreciably larger, honestly. I want to hear what you think, though. Be sure to leave your comments in the comment section down below. Let me know if you have any new ideas for this series or this channel. Of course, you can join up on our Discord server and have a chat with us live and in person. You can get the newsletter and get access to these videos a day earlier than everyone else. And of course, if you like this video, just hit, you know, send it to your friends, like and share. I'm always appreciative of that. Subscribe if you haven't already. 
And of course, in the meantime, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.